Hello, Dan Harvey for Boris Effects here with a look at some advanced strategies for working with Mocha in the BCC Pixel Chooser. I'll begin with an overview. The Pixel Chooser is available in most of the BCC tools. In this case I've applied BCC Glint and I can find the Pixel Chooser at the bottom of the effect menu. The Pixel Chooser consists of two components, a matte which can be derived from colour channels, luminance or in this case a chroma key. The second component is a shape, or shapes, created in Mocha. The Launch Mocha button displays the Mocha UI where I can create, animate and track my shapes. When I save the shape in the Mocha UI and return to the timeline, my effect is held out by the combination of the Pixel Chooser Mat and the Mocha Shape. Now let's take a look at more detail how these tools can be used in a broadcast context. In this case an example of identity protection for this lady in the crowd. I'll begin by selecting BCC Witness Protection from the Avid Effect Palette and dragging it to my timeline segment. BCC Witness Protection applies a range of filters to a user-defined region, including blur, mosaic and colour correction. In this case I'll select blur. The default circle area is affecting the people in the foreground here and I'd like to define a more precise mask. So I'll select the pixel chooser to define the shape and select a mocha spline as the shape type. I'll hit the launch mocha button in order to create my shape and ignore the resolution warning to continue working at proxy res as there's sufficient detail in the shot to obtain a good track. I'll hit the create X spline button to begin plotting my shape. Right clicking closes the shape. Right click and drag on the tension handles tightens or relaxes the shape vertices. Dragging the white banding box transforms the shape. The face is more clearly defined at the end of the clip so that's a good place to start tracking. I'll move to the end of the timeline and hit track backwards to begin tracking my shape. I can pause the tracking at any point and adjust my shape to manually insert keyframes. Now I'll continue tracking and pause just before my shape is occluded by the people in the foreground. I'll set a shape keyframe and move to the frame where I want to set a new keyframe. Auto key is enabled so a keyframe is set automatically when I move the shape. Now I'll continue tracking. It's always a good idea to give your shapes descriptive names as the shape list can get quite busy on complex projects. I'll hit create X-spline again, plot a shape for the foreground occlusion and track it forwards. Now I'll display the mat and switch to layer properties and change the layer mode for the occlusion to subtract which will cut a hole in any layers below, as we can see when I select the face shape. Now I'll save my Mocha project and return to the timeline. Here we can see the witness protection blur is applied inside the Mocha shape. I'll finish by feathering the Mocha shape to soften its edge. Here's the final result. In the next example of a TV drama grade I'll add a BCC colour corrector effect to my timeline segment, launch mocha, plot a shape around the book and track it. Now I'll create another shape for the table area. I'll marquee select the shape vertices, switch to the edge properties tab and set the edge softness in order to soften the shape. Rather than track this shape again I'll switch to layer properties and link this shape to the track I've already measured for the book shape and its motion follows accordingly. I'll save my mocha project, return to the timeline, invert the mask and adjust the brightness as required. Now I'll adjust the shape feathering in context. 
Next I'd like to sharpen the text on the book. I've already tracked the mask for the book and I'd like to reuse that mask on my sharpen effect so I'll relaunch Mocha and select export project from the file menu. This allows me to save a copy of the Mocha project for use in other effects. Now I'll ALT drag the BCC Magic Sharp effect to add it above the colour corrector. Launch Mocha, select Merge Project from the File menu and select the project I just exported. I don't need the table mask for this effect so I'll select it and hit Backspace to delete it before saving the project, returning to the timeline and adjusting the sharpness in context. In the next example I'll use the BCC Charcoal Sketch filter to apply a graphical look to this shot. I'll adjust its transparency and launch Mocha. I'd like to apply this to the painting on the canvas and have it spread over the whole shot when the artist raises his brush to the canvas. I'll start by plotting a shape around the canvas and animating the roto with auto key enabled. Next I'll add a shape for the hand in the foreground and track it until the track is lost. When I switch to the dope sheet view I can select and delete the bad keyframes before setting a shape keyframe and animating the hand position manually. Finally I'll change the hand layer mode to subtract which will cut a hole in the canvas shape below. Now I'll create a wipe shape inside the canvas, relax the vertices, set some edge softness and animate its size and softness with auto key enabled before saving and returning to the timeline. Here's the final result. It's worth noting that when a Mocha project has been exported it can be loaded and reused in any Mocha or BCC host application on any operating system. I'm running BCC Multihost on my system so I have access to the full BCC toolset in all of my favourite applications. In this example I have the same shot in an After Effects composition where I'd like to try a different filter. So I'll launch Mocha and merge in the Mocha project I exported from Avid. This approach makes it possible to build up a library of effect and mask presets for quick access from any BCC effect on any host application. The same applies for BCC effect presets. In the next example I'd like to smooth the flesh tone on the talent's face here, so I'll apply the BCC Beauty Studio effect. I'll increase the smoothing to soften the flesh tone. The pixel chooser matte is set to key mode with typical European flesh tones defined as key colours by default. I'll sample the flesh tone colours on the talent, hit view matte to show the black and white matte and adjust the key softness, blur and choke as required. In the Pixar Chooser Mask menu a number of preset shapes are available for creating quick masks. I'll select the egg shape and adjust its transform and softness. As the soft key is also affecting the eyes and mouth here I'd like to create a more precise mask so I'll launch Mocha to begin plotting an X-Blind shape and aligning it with the face. The Add X Spline to Shape tool allows me to add additional splines to the current shape. When the added shapes overlap, they cut a hole in the shape as we can see here with the eyes and mouth. I'll export this shape to use as a starting point for face masks in other projects before saving and returning to the timeline to view the result. It's worth bearing in mind that the BCC Pixel Chooser isn't limited to working with BCC tools. 
In this example I'll add a new video track and duplicate the segment in V1. I'll add the native Avid colour corrector to V2. Now I'll add the standalone BCC pixel chooser effect by alt dragging it to V2. By default the pixel chooser outputs a black and white matte. I'll change this to alpha channel which will key V2 over V1. Now I'll set the pixel chooser matte to none because I don't want to use the matte in this case. Next I'll launch Mocha and merge in the face matte project I exported earlier. I'll adjust it to fit the talent's face and track the motion before saving, exiting to the timeline and applying some feathering to the shape. Now I can colour correct the face in context with the native Avid colour corrector held back by the BCC pixel chooser. Using the standalone pixel chooser opens up a range of possibilities for advanced garbage masking on visual effects projects. Here I have a background on V1 and a green screen on V2. I'll apply the BCC Chroma Key Studio effect to V2 and sample the key colour. Now I'll need to garbage mask the rigging. BCC Chroma Key Studio has basic masking tools included. Hence there's no pixel chooser or mocha option. As with any of the few BCC effects that don't have an integral pixel chooser, I can alt drag a standalone pixel chooser to add it above the effect to hold it back. I'll set its output to alpha channel and disable the matte. Now I'll bypass my Kia so that I can see all of the detail to remove on the green screen and launch Mocha from the standalone pixel chooser. I'll plot shapes for the rigging and begin tracking. I'll stop tracking before the gun occludes the rigging and plot a shape around the gun. In layer properties I'll set an in point for the gun shape because I only need it from this frame onwards. Layer priority is important in Mocha. The shape masking the object nearest the camera should always be at the top of the shape stack as with the gun here. I'll turn on show matte and drag the triangle at the bottom of the matte button to select the show track matte option. This shows the area that will be tracked for the rig shape. Note how the area masked out by the gun shape above is ignored, reducing the chances of any tracking errors which may result from the occlusion. Now I'll continue tracking. Next I'll plot a shape for the small spot on the green screen. I'm going to choose to track translation only in this case. I don't want to track the other shapes again, so I'll turn off their cog icons to disable tracking. I'll select Add X Blind to Shape and add additional shapes for the other spots. Now I'll add another shape for this occluded spot, set an in point and link it to the track I measured for the original spot. Finally I'll move the gun shape to the top of the stack and set it to subtract mode so that it'll cut a hole in all of the shapes below it before saving and returning to the timeline. Now I'll invert the mocha shape, re-enable BCC Chroma Key Studio and view the result. I'd like the background still to follow the foreground camera motion. The tracking information I need in order to achieve this already exists in Mocha as I've tracked the rigging already. I'll return to Mocha, select one of my rig shapes and show the surface overlay. The surface is a representation of the plane I've tracked and the corners can be adjusted to align it. I'll align the centre point with the elbow on the rigging. Now I can export the tracking data for the corner pin or the centre point. In this case I'll export the centre point track. 
Now I'll add a BCC match move effect to the background in V1. I'll twirl open the motion tracker options and import the track data I exported from Mocha. Now I'll select the V1 layer as the offset target, adjust the transform as required and view the result. Now we're in Resolve for the final grade, and I'd like to add a lens flare as a finishing touch. I'll add another node, and insert BCC Lens Flare 3D. As with BCC effect presets and mocha shapes, mocha tracking data can also be exchanged between BCC hosts, so I'll load in the track I saved out of Avid earlier, and apply it to the light source so that my lens flare follows the camera. Thanks for watching. For more great post-production tutorials, check out the videos on borisfx.com.